What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to introduce you to a tool that we're going to use called Postman. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and want me to continue on creating tutorials, I have created a Patreon where you could get subscriptions and you will get benefits such as a private Discord group where we could help each other. It's pretty difficult to maintain all the questions that I'm getting through Instagram and YouTube and even though I'm trying to respond to all of them, the private group on Discord will be very beneficial for you guys because I want to create a community where we could all help each other. Now let's continue on with the actual content of this video. I want to use Postman as the API client for this course in order to create, share and test document APIs. Postman started off as a Chrome extension in 2012 and later on they expanded to an application that can be downloaded. Now if you don't want to download an API client software, there are loads of extensions in your browser that you could use. It's totally up to you. When I want to do easy tests and stuff, I usually use a browser extension as well. So what you could do is to go to a new tab, write down API client Chrome. And right here, you can see an advanced REST client for Google Chrome. Let's open it. And honestly, this will do a lot of the work as well. There's always a but. And there are a couple reasons why I recommend you to use Postman instead of something else. And one of them is the fact that you could have multiple workspaces in Postman. It also allows you to share a workspace whenever you're working in a group. And that's just a big benefit that Postman has. Whenever you have a group of requests, you can put them inside the collection in Postman. It also allows you to interact with a mock server, which is a feature that makes your API endpoints and responses. A very important fact is that you can monitor, or better to say, schedule automated tests that your API will perform. Now that I've mentioned some important points where you should choose for Postman, I want to start the download process. What you could do is to go to the official website, create an account where you could download it. But what you also could do is to go to the other tab, write down Postman download. And the first link is the postman forward slash download link. So let's open it. Depending on your operating system, you can download postman. But whenever you do that, you still have to have an account. And pause the video and come back when it's downloaded. All right, as you could see at the bottom left, postman has been installed. So open it and let me go to a new window. It's extracting it right now. So this might take a second as well. Let me drag it to my desktop, close it off. You can see that Postman has been installed. So let's open it. Postman is an app that has been downloaded from the internet. So let's open it. And I also want to move it to the application folder. And this might take a second, so be patient and the login screen will come up. Let me zoom in. As you can see, we have our Postman set up right now, but what I want to do is to log in first. So I already have an account. If you don't, just create your account as you could see in the pop-up right there. So let me log in. All right, let me close off the browser and it's signing in via a web browser, so that's cool. If you have created an account or you already had an account and you logged in, you will be prompted with a greeting interface. If you're coming back for a second time, your screen will be something like what I have. The first thing that you want to do when using Postman is to create a workspace. And before I do that, let me actually zoom in a little bit. All right. As you can see in the top menu, we have a button here called Workspaces. So let's click on it. And it has a default My Workspace because if we click on the three buttons, we can't delete it. So what I want to do is to create a new workspace. So let's click on it. What we need to do now is to give it a name. So let's say Build, not in capitals, Build APIs with code with Dari. All right, I don't need a summary, but be aware that you need to set your visibility to personal so you can only access your API. Now let's create a workspace. And as you could see, we have created our workspace right now. And we have a title right here, which is the title of our workspace and right here as well. So you can see that we're inside our workspace. And that's it. We just created a workspace where we can mess around with our APIs. Now don't be overwhelmed with all the buttons that you're seeing on the screen right now. What I want to do is to go over the interface a little bit. Let me make it bigger. All right, and let me zoom in. Nah, it's all right. 
If we look at our interface, you can see that we basically have two windows. So the left one, that's this part with a light gray background color. And we have the right window, which is the white background one. Now, even though the left window is pretty big, let's just call it a side panel. And in the side panel, we will create our collections of endpoints for our API. Now the main area, which is the right window, is the area where we do most of our work. In here, we could create requests, define the body of our request and way more. So let me show you how that works. It's totally up to you. You could get started and create a request. Let me click on it. You can see that a new tab has been opened or you could click on the plus sign, which I usually prefer. All right, and now we can close off the overview. And this is actually the window that we're going to use. So let me show you some important things that we need to know right here. As you can see right here, we have a drop down menu. So let's click on it, where you could choose all the type of HTTP verbs you want to use. What we're going to do is to work with get, post, put, patch, delete, and that's it. We don't need the rest. So whenever you want to perform a post request, you just click on post. As you can see in the title, get has been changed to post as well. And whenever you want to delete or patch, you can easily change it. But let's set it to get now. Now next to the type of request, so the HTTP verb, you can see a big input field right here. In here, you need to write down the request URL. So this is kind of your endpoint that you need or where you want to perform a get request on. Now right below the type of HTTP verb and the input field, so the buttons that we have and the query params is something that we will cover later on. So I have found a URL that we could use to test some stuff out since I don't want to get right into creating our own API. Now inside the URL, let's write down HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash go rest dot co dot in. Now if you go to Google and search for test APIs, you can find lots of data. So this is the one that I have found. Let's say forward slash public dash API forward slash users. What I want to do is to perform a get request. So let's send the data. And this takes a second. All right. Let's make the panel a little bit bigger. What you can find in the body is a response document from the server underneath the request area. So let's see what's in here. Like I said in the last video, we have our curly brace right here. And we have our, let me scroll down, ending curly brace right here. So we have a code, which is 200, which is the status code that you can see right here as well. We have a meta, so our pagination. And we have a data array where all the users of this API has been stored. What we see right here is called the response area. Beside the actual content that has been sent back, you could also see the cookies, which are empty right now, the headers, and the test results. But let's go back to headers for a second. Let me scroll up. Now, REST API often reads and sends non-content information using headers. And that's what we're in right now. And this is actually pretty important. Let me give you an example to make it more clearer. Any request that goes to Go REST API will return header detailing the current user limiting status. And take your time to just go over what's in the headers. But let me give you one example. We have content type right here, which is the application JSON. So the body is a JSON, which means that the content type needs to be JSON. Let me go back to the body for a second. And the next thing that I want to show you is the history, because I ran into many situations where I once created a request URL and completely forgot where it was. A cool thing in Postman is the history tab, as you can see right here in the left panel. So let's click on it. Since we only have one request, you can only see one item right here. But imagine if you have a complete list right here with URLs. Another cool thing in Postman is collections. Sometimes you want to use a collection when dealing with Postman. So whenever you want to group related requests, you can click on collections at the top left panel, create a new collection, and let's rename it. Right click on it, rename my first, excuse me, my first collection. And what we could do is to add a request. Let's say that we have HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, or let's go back to the old tab and let's copy the entire URL. Let's paste it in. Let's send it one more time. 
Oh, I made a typo. I obviously need to print it out right here. It's a GET request. Let's send it. And we have the same body. And we have placed our request inside my first collection, which is pretty cool. Now, using collections might be different for different scenarios. Let me give you an example. I like to use a collection for my localhost APIs. So I usually create a new folder right here, rename it localhost, and then I have a new collection called, let's say, actual URL endpoints. The reason why I do this is to not have a messy workspace. I like to keep things together. Now that being said, this was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.